Greetings. My name is Blaze, and today I wanted to talk about casting circles. Now, the interesting thing about casting circles when you're trying to cast a spell is to know why, what they are, and let's talk about whether or not you even need them. So to begin with, do you even need to cast a circle if you're going to cast a spell? No, absolutely not. So why would you cast a circle? Depending on the tradition of magic that you are practicing depends on whether or not a circle is recommended. Yes, I say recommended because, again, it's not something that's a necessity. So what does casting a circle do for you? Well, to begin with, a circle is not actually a circle. It's actually a bubble. It is quite literally an orb around the area where you are casting the spell. There are many different methods when it comes to magic or raising energy or vibration. They can happen through mysticism or spellcraft or ritual. There's different types of approaches, whether it's using words or prayer or including deities or elemental forces or inner forces, invocation, evocation. There's different types of tools like ritual items that you can use. You can use wands, you can use staves, you can use athames, you can use your just your hands. You can use elemental representation, feathers, candles, incense. It, there's such a wide variety depending on the different tradition that you practice. So if you decided for some reason you feel the necessity to cast a spell, whether it be for protection or for guidance or for calm, peace of mind, maybe healing, doesn't really matter the reason so much as what your ultimate goal is typically has to do with something you want to have a lot of oomph behind it. Now, of course, you can cast spells with a group of individuals. Depending on the tradition, some individuals call this a coven. Casting magic with others, typically you want to have a close, trusting relationship with those individuals. They should be friends, folks that you practice with regularly. Family. So someone that, or a group of someones that you are very close to and attuned with. I would not recommend just casting spells with anyone. You can also cast a spell or do a ritual by yourself. Typically, if you are going to be raising these vibrations in the spell, and I do have other videos that talk about this as well, but I'd like to talk a little bit about spellcraft right now. The idea behind a spell is raising a collective vibration and then releasing it out into the world. So depending, again, on your tradition, releasing it all at one time individuals may fa find this to be more potent. There's also releasing all of this energy and combining it with the natural forces. So again, so it's coming together and then firing out sort of like an arrow or a ripple effect. You can draw a circle on the ground around yourself and you can do this spiritually or astrally. So you could sit, relax, open your mind, and then visualize it in your mind casting the circle. You could also use your hand and point. Now, I'm using two fingers because, again, depending on the tradition that you're following, there are elemental representations of fingers in your hand, and maybe I'll get into this in a later video, but the idea here is that the index and pointer finger are the two elements for spirit and fire. So, akasha and fire, depending on, again, the tradition that you're following. So, by Pointing with these two fingers, you're essentially casting a spiritual flame. Fire purifies and cleanses. So you would trace a circle around yourself in a large enough area that any of the ritual activity or the spell work activity would be able to not cross that circle. Some individuals believe that when you cast the circle, you should cast it clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on the purpose of the magic you're trying to accomplish. Counterclockwise typically is for banishing removals. Clockwise is for increasing or amplifying or protecting. So again, it depends on the tradition. There's such a great variety when it comes to magic and spellcraft. I want to at least talk about the generalities so that you can apply it to your own personal path, regardless of what that may be. When you are casting the circle around yourself, you would choose a direction based upon its intent. Now, some individuals will have you start in a specific direction. Take Druidry, for example. Typically, when you prepare your area for a ritual or a ceremony, you are entering in from the west. You're sitting on the westmost corner of where your circle will begin. 
and then you will enter into the center from the west. And then typically you will go around to the different directions starting in the north. Now, why is that? And this is specific to the northern hemisphere. And that's because the sun rises in the east in the northern hemisphere. So you're entering and you're seeing the sun the direction it would be coming from, as an example. But again, there's many different reasons of where you would start or how you would cast it based upon your tradition. Or take Wicca, for example. In the Wiccan read, many of the versions will have cast a circle thrice about to keep unwelcome spirits out. So you actually will draw a circle three times. And typically this is done clockwise. And the main purpose in this case is not just for containing and allowing the energy to build up in the vibration, but also to keep unwelcome energies out. Not just spirits, but spiritual energy in general. So again, it's a protection thing to protect the work that you're working on. So aside from using your fingers and visualizing flame, maybe blue spiritual fire, you can also use a wand. You can use a staff and walk in a circle. You can use an athame. You can use a sword. You can pretty much use any sort of ritual implement that is sacred to your personal path. Also, some individuals will actually have a permanent circle built and perhaps use stones. I've actually seen other individuals lay stones out when they're about to do their ritual, and they'll use this group of stones and possibly put it into a spiral or something, or just have it to where you have the entry and exits open just enough for you to go through, or have pillars or elemental representations at the corners, and they'll set these up and use the same stones or same representations for their circle. Again, this circle is an actual orb. So think about the fact the earth itself. You were talking about the four corners. You're talking about the earth. This is very earth-based vibrational energy when you're talking about casting a circle. So again, in some of the traditions, when you do create your circle, which is what's actually touching the surface of the earth, the bubble goes above it and below it. So some individuals will actually cast a circle. They'll do it three times, and then they'll say, as above, so below. And what they're literally doing is they're creating a dome of energy above the air above the circle, as well as below it within the earth. So again, you are doing this all-encompassing bubble. So now you have this bubble. Well, one thing to point out, depending on your tradition, if individuals, people walk through the circle itself, or if you enter or leave, it can kind of break the protective bubble. So you don't want that. However, many traditions don't have a problem with familiars or even animals crossing it as they are natural energies that will help enhance and can kind of walk through it without disrupting the energies that are being raised or the vibrations inside. Spell work itself, you are collectively creating a harmonious vibration of energy that you're going to attempt to release all at one time. So you are closing off this bubble and making this area of saying this space inside this orb is sacred. This space inside this orb is collecting the vibration for my intent that I'm trying to manifest forth in this world. Again, whether it be guidance, protection, healing, whatever the case may be, you're trying to accumulate as much as you can through maybe song, through poetry and words, uh, through incense, through oils, through candles, through vibrations, through singing. There's just general thought and intent doing certain tracings in the air of certain elemental symbols, vibrations, or even using different types of sigil type of magic to, again, manifest and there, again, there's so much to go into with spell work. But the point of all of the spell work, all the ritual, all the things you're doing inside this orb is because you want to dedicate this space to only that. So for the sake of a ritual or a sacred holiday or something like that, you are taking a time and a moment out from all of existence and only focusing on this specific intent and not being influenced by outside vibrations. If you are going to be building up the vibrations to release some sort of a spell or for spell work, then again, you're building up these vibrations to intensify them and let them out. This, once more, I have to stress this, this is not all traditions. Not all folks do it. But if you do feel like there's purpose to do it, or you feel like there would be value in doing something like that, this is a few of the reasons and a few of the ways that you can go about it. So again, tracing it clockwise or counterclockwise, making sure that the bubble goes above and below, and using either a ritual tool, your hand, your mind, 
palm of your hand, finger pointing, it doesn't really matter, whatever feels most comfortable for you. And then remembering when your spell work ritual ceremony is done to release that bubble. Because then after you create the circle, you are breaking the circle and allowing it to go out into the world to hopefully manifest your will. That's the ultimate intent. Or again, to release that sacred space because your ceremony or your celebration is done. Now, in some magical traditions as well, the idea is after you've cast a spell, you forget about it. So that's one thing to consider. When you're in the moment, you're stepping out of this world, you're entering into the state of spiritual awareness and enlightenment, hopefully, and you are trying to manifest your will into this world to bring it into being to positively influence natural flows. Not fighting against them, not controlling others, not mind controlling, but working on yourself or your safety or your, again, outside influences that are positive. But in some traditions, after you've done your spell work and your ritual and you release that, you, you no longer think of that. You want to let it go out there. You want to no longer dwell and pull those energies back in. You want to let them go out, forget about them, and move on to allow that manifestation to take place. So hopefully this has answered a few of your questions when it comes to casting circles, why you do it, and some methods that you could potentially use. So thanks for watching. Remember to thumb up, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.